Hey everyone, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about what to do if you have a positive anti-nuclear antibody test. I'll be talking about the basic facts, uh, why are they even ordered, and what do those results mean? All right, so let's start with the basics. So anti-nuclear antibodies, or ANA, are kind of a generic term for a, a wide family of antibodies of various specificities that uh, attach to nucleic acids in the nucleus of cells uh, and some associated kind of like nuclear proteins. Uh, you can find anti-nuclear antibodies in about, I mean, you can actually find them in just about all of us, but uh, levels that rise to kind of maybe abnormal, uh, about 15% of people uh, in the U.S. have uh, abnormally high levels of anti-nuclear antibodies. And so anti-nuclear antibodies are tested because they can give you sort of a clue into if someone might have an autoimmune condition. Okay, so ANAs or anti-nuclear antibodies are more common in women than men. Uh, they're more common once you get past the age of 50 versus younger, and they're more common in African Americans and than people of other races. Now, the big problem with ANA antibodies is uh, they're not super specific, and I'll explain kind of the testing logic in just a second, but kind of physiologically, uh, uh, anti-nuclear antibodies uh, are just not specific for certain autoimmune conditions, uh, and the way they're used is they're kind of used as like casting a net, right? So you can find anti-nuclear antibodies in a whole list of autoimmune conditions, uh, systemic lupus, uh, Hashimoto's, you can find them in Sjogren's, you can find them in mixed connective tissue disease, you can find them in autoimmune hepatitis, uh, you can find them in idiopathic thrombocytic purpura, you can find them in epilepsy, uh, idiopathic epilepsy, you can find them in so many different types of conditions. So just having positive anti-nuclear antibodies doesn't really mean anything yet. And remember, there's a good chunk of people that are healthy uh, they don't have apparently any problems and, and will not go on to have any autoimmune problems that might have some anti-nuclear antibodies that can be detected, okay? So uh, if, if you go like to the LabCorp website and look up anti-nuclear antibodies, you can see a paragraph in there where they describe kind of, you know, what are the limitations of this test. So I'll explain, the, I'll kind of explain that in just a second. So why are these tests even ordered? Why would someone even order an anti-nuclear antibody test for you? Well, it's kind of based on your symptoms. So usually what happens is you will have uh, kind of some chronic pain, like joint pain or muscle pain, and then you'll have some kind of fatigue or something like that, and that'll eventually kind of get you referred, if we're talking about the traditional sort of uh, healthcare model in our, our country, it'll kind of get you uh, referred to a rheumatologist, right? And the rheumatologist will typically order just a generic right, broad net called anti-nuclear antibodies, okay? Now, when they order that, what they're really looking for, kind of the logic of it is, is like this. We're gonna do this anti-nuclear antibody test, which is really uh, looking for like 35 different potential antibodies, but it's all, but it's all called anti-nuclear antibodies, right? And then if those generically as a category come back positive, then we're gonna start doing individual specific antibody tests that have a lot more specificity for certain conditions. So um, if you look at this result here, and I'm going to put this up on the screen, you have an ANA test, right? And the result will either be positive or abnormal, uh, positive or normal, right? And that can be a little misleading, but just kind of run with me. And then you'll see uh, information about different types of patterns, right? Uh, like homogenous pattern or nucleolar pattern or centromere pattern. And you also see a number like, you know, 1 to 40 or 1 to 10. Now, here's what those results mean. First level of result is positive or not, right? And if it's positive, then they're going to give you a titer. And that titer is that number like 1 to 40, 1 to 80. And what you want to know about that is, is the higher that number is, uh, the more likely you really have some kind of autoimmune disease. 1 to 40, not super likely. 1 to 80, more likely. 1 to 320, that's pretty likely that you're going to end up having some kind of autoimmune condition uh, the more that they test. Okay, the patterns are what we call fluorescence patterns, and basically they're just showing uh, how these antibodies bind to different things. Okay, 
uh, and I won't really go into more than that, but those patterns can have some associations with certain conditions. Now, they're not strict, okay, and they're not guaranteed. So if you go start Googling, you know, what do these different patterns mean? What you got to realize is recently, in the last couple of years, how these tests are interpreted has changed a little bit, okay? Um, and so the disease associations, that's been kind of, people are using a different language now. They're using a clinical relevance, which means, hey, your antibodies came back positive. Maybe you have one of these patterns like nuclear or speckled or something like that, but that doesn't mean you have anything yet, okay? They still have to do one of these specific tests to see if you have um, like uh, Smith antibodies or SSA antibodies or SSB or chromatin antibodies or double-stranded DNA antibodies, okay? So again, the, just the presence of the ANA antibodies does not mean you have an autoimmune condition because uh, healthy people, some healthy people have those, and so you just can't, you know, you can't write that in stone. Now, the titer is very important. So the other research that's come out says that, look, if someone's titer is like 1 to 320, that's probably a really good cutoff. And I want you to remember that number, okay? Remember the 1 to 320 because that's going to really come to play here in just a second when I talk about, uh, you know, what, what to do with the results. Like, what is the doctor going to do with them? Okay. So again, what's the idea? Casting a big net because you've got symptoms, and then we're going to see, you know, are the are the ANA antibodies positive? And they're positive. Then we're going to do this other testing. The problem is if that follow-up testing doesn't show anything, like if all the like 20 or 30 antibodies are going to do, and I'll show you a list on the screen, like if they do these antibodies and none of those come back positive, they're going to say, you don't have anything. We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, come back in a year, and if you're worse, we'll test again. And that is the problem in my opinion. Now, I made a video a long time ago about ANA, about ANA antibodies. I call it uh, ANA antibodies, uh, pain and fatigue, wait and see, right? Well, the people are still doing that. I mean, almost all rheumatologists are still doing this. And it's because they can't really offer you anything if you don't have an obvious autoimmune condition. But here's the thing. If you've got, and this, I want you to commit this to memory. If you've got pain, you've got fatigue, right? And you have positive anti-nuclear antibodies and the titer was uh, 1 to 320 or higher, but none of the follow-up antibody testing was negative, you need to find someone who's very familiar with some additional testing, okay? Now, the follow-up testing that I'm going to tell you that I think you need to be doing is something called comprehensive lymphocyte immunophenotyping and uh, multiple tissue autoimmune reactivity testing. Now, both of those are done by a lab like, uh, called Cyrex, and I don't have any financial anything with those guys. I, I just use them for years and years. Um, you need to be working with someone that understands those tests, is very experienced ordering those tests. Why? Because you want to be proactive, not reactive. I mean, why would you want to wait for another year for things to get worse so that you might have some irreversible damage and then maybe you'll get some sort of medical treatment, right? That doesn't make any sense to me, right? So yeah, there is a line uh, below which the ANA antibodies being positive and the follow-up test being negative probably doesn't mean much. But listen, if you've got a first-degree family member that has an autoimmune condition, whatever it is, and you've got positive ANA antibodies and you've got symptoms and your titer is 1 to 320 or higher, the odds are really good you've got some kind of autoimmune problem. It just may not be one of the ones that they're testing. Okay. Now, the type of things they're testing for are Sjogren's and mixed connective tissue disease and lupus and things like that, but you may not have one of those. You may have something else and you may have anti-nuclear antibodies that's pointing us saying, oh my gosh, there's an autoimmune problem, right? So, the real big takeaway of this, this, this video is positive antibodies don't always mean something, okay? But they can mean something under certain conditions. So go back, and I'll repeat them again. So here's the deal. If you've got positive ANA antibodies, okay, and the titer was 1 to 320 or higher, okay, but the follow-up testing that the rheumatologist does is negative, you're not out of the woods. You really are not out of the woods. You need to find a doctor who's very experienced with two types of tests comprehensive lymphocyte immunophenotyping and multiple tissue autoimmune reactivity testing because I think you ought to be getting those tests done. You ought to be being proactive and start searching out and finding out why is my immune system out of whack, right? That becomes even more important if you already have relatives that have known autoimmune problems. So be proactive, not reactive when it comes to positive ANA antibodies.